Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be looking at how to update the motherboard BIOS um, if you're going to be upgrading your CPU or if you just want to upgrade the BIOS to the latest most supported version that contains things like improved memory compatibility and stability fixes and that sort of thing. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to first go to the website of your motherboard manufacturer. So in this case I'm using a Gigabyte Aorus uh, X670 Elite AX. So we're going to go to that website and you're going to want to click on support. So you're going to want to go to the support page, you're going to click on that. So from the support page you're going to want to look for BIOS, wherever it says that. Now this may be vary depending on what motherboard brand you have. But we can see here so Gigabyte has a whole bunch of different BIOSes. The latest one is going to be at the top, so it shows February 21st, 2023, F7B. So, so if there's a letter, a lowercase letter after the number, that indicates that it's a beta BIOS. So this is F7 beta. Uh, you can see on the right side of the description, update AMD Agisa 1005C. C is the patch level. And then the version number is 1005. So 1005 is the first BIOS release to contain support for the Ryzen 9 7950X3D and 7900X3D. So those vCache, those 3D vCache CPUs everybody's been anticipating. You have to be on a uh, GISA 1005 minimum in order to have official support for those CPUs. So you're going to want to download that. So we're going to go ahead and download that. And then once it's downloaded, you're going to want to add it to uh, a USB thumb drive. So in my case, I'm using a one gigabyte USB flash drive. You're going to want to make sure that the USB drive, so you can see right here, the file system for, of the USB drive is fat. It has to be formatted for this in order for the UEFI BIOS to be able to detect this drive and then read the BIOS file from it. So once that's done, go ahead and just copy that downloaded file over. You're going to want to put the actual BIOS file. So in this case, I have a number of BIOSes on here already. Um, but you can see the one that we want in particular for this example is going to be the X670 Aorus Elite AX.F7B. That's because I have this type of motherboard. Now again, if you have an ASUS, ASRock, MSI, you're going to want to download that BIOS for that motherboard. So once you have that uh, installed on the USB, now we're going to reboot the computer and go into the BIOS. Okay, so it's going to post, and you're going to want to keep hitting the delete key in order to get into the BIOS. So now we're in the BIOS, and what you're going to want to do, uh, it depends on, if, if you have an overclock, running, I would recommend loading optimized defaults and then going back into the BIOS and then doing the upgrade. Otherwise, if not, you're not using like curve optimizer or any of those things, then you can just simply press F8 or you're going to want to go to where it says Q flash if you're on a gigabyte motherboard. Uh, it might be something else. If on, I believe MSI it's called M flash. ASUS I don't remember, but it's going to be something similar and then ASRock I also don't remember. Um, but it's going to be something, look for something for Flash. Sometimes it's also going to be in the boot menu. If we go over here. Uh, so, so the Gigabyte one doesn't have it. But in this case, it's going to be QFlash. So I'm going to hit F8. That's going to bring up another menu now where I can update the BIOS or I can save the existing BIOS. So in this case, we're going to go to Update BIOS. You click that. It also tells you the current version, or at least the Gigabyte motherboard does. So I'm currently running a BIOS from November of last year, F7A. So this is a GISA 1003, uh, patch D. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to select the the one that contains support for the latest Ryzen CPUs. So it's going to be Gigabyte Aorus Elite F7B. So it's going to be this one down here. You select that, and then you're going to click on the Continue button. And it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to do this? The system must restart, restart to complete the BIOS update process. So we're going to say yes. So it's going to read the file and verify that it's a legitimate copy. So that's what the checksum is for. And then ready to reboot. So then you can just simply press reboot. Or 
you can just let it do it on its own because it will do that. It'll time out and just start the update process automatically. Now, while this is happening, you're going to want to make sure that you do not turn off the computer while this is happening, and you also don't want to try to plug in or unplug any sort of peripherals or anything like that while this is going on. The main thing is you want to keep power to the device. You don't want to lose power. You don't want to unplug the device. Otherwise, you will break the BIOS, and then you will have to recover it using the BIOS flashback feature on the motherboard. So depending on the BIOS, the amount of time it takes to update could vary depending on the motherboard model, the size of the BIOS file, um, how much, how many changes were made to the firmware, the GISA firmware, any sort of like smooths or hot fixes that came from AMD, and then also any any additional smooth fixes that the motherboard manufacturer decided to include as well. After the BIOS is updated. Typically, it will revert back to the default settings that the motherboard came with from the factory, meaning any sort of overclock profile or XMP or Expo memory profile, all those things will have been removed, so you'll have to reapply those after a BIOS update. Um, other things too, like BIOS settings, such as enabling uh, SVM for virtualization, for running like VMs and that sort of thing, you're going to have to re-enable that as well. I don't know why... Uh, desktop motherboards still have that disabled by default because most laptops today have that enabled by default. So I do find that kind of weird. It's kind of annoying to have to always re-enable that. Uh, I think resizable bar is now also uh, set to be enabled by default. So you shouldn't have to re-enable resizable bar, but you do want to check and verify that. Other things like the idle power state, uh, any sort of like C states enabled or disabled, you're going to want to verify that all those settings are correct. Um, and then disable any sort of like downloader that the motherboard manufacturer sets to on so that when it doesn't boot into Windows it doesn't try to prompt you to download the downloader unless you unless you want the downloader to help with updating drivers but I, I personally don't really use it so it looks like we're getting toward the end here okay so now it's going to reboot I think it's also going to do memory training again now as though it was a cold boot again from zero because any sort of like memory profile that was in there got removed. And that's because it's overwritten whatever the previous BIOS had. Okay, so it looks like after that it will post and you're going to want to go in the BIOS now that it's reset. And... <clears throat> um, and then you're going to want to apply any sort of <clears throat> XMP profile again, um, or virtualization, any sort of thing like that, just to make sure that it's back to normal. Uh, test the settings. Okay, so it posted. And now we're going back into Windows. So once we get back into Windows, we're going to check to make sure that the BIOS has been updated. Okay, once you're back in Windows, you're just going to want to verify with CPU-Z or maybe Hardware Info that you are on the latest BIOS. You can see we are successfully on F7B. So that is the one that has a GISA 1005 for support of the X3D Vcash CPUs. So the 7950X3D and the 7900X3D. So hope you guys found this video uh, useful and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.